after the discussion. Number one, identify the elements of the selection process. Number two, define ways to measure the success of selection method. Three, summarize the government's requirements for employee selection. Number four, compare the common methods used for selecting how employers carry out the process of making selection decisions. Hi, good day everyone. I'm Brian Dumdum and I'm going to give you some information about the selection process in the organization. So, let's start. Identifying the elements of the selection process. Selection process, personal selection, the process through which organization make decision about who will or will not be allowed to join the organization. Selection starts in identifying their background and analyzing the applicant's history if it will go to pass the initial attempt in reducing the mass number of candidates. Also, if the candidates who fortunately pass the initial screening will continue regarding on the job description. And as the end of the process, they will place in the job that will match on their performance. Take note that there is a process in which the candidates will pass into once they have been accepted and the process of selection is varied from organization to organization and job to job. Since you already know what the selection process is, I think it's time to dig more about the steps included with the selection method. Here are the steps in selection process. The first one is the screening application and resume. HR personnel is responsible to review the application and resume of the candidates past the initial stage before it will be handled by the supervisor. Para ma-ensure na walang na-mislead na information before it handled by the higher position. After reviewing the application and resume, they will implement tests and review its work sample for the candidates to measure their abilities and skill to assess how good they are in job. Dito na rin pumapasok yung iba't ibang test measurement like personality test, intelligence test, and cognitive ability test. These tests are performed according to the job description. Those with accepted abilities will persuasively invited in the organization for numinous interviews. Now at this point, HR personnel and supervisor starting to have a free judgment based on candidate's level of performance. Thus, Personnel will check references and background of the candidates for further selection and inclusion of the candidates to join the organization. The very last part making a selection, decision makers and supervisor will going to decide who will continue into the training among the top candidates. For those who had been selected, will receive job offer that fits on their performance all throughout the previous selection process. Selection process, especially the steps contained with it, are undeniably important in hiring and choosing the best performing among the mass number candidates. This is one of the contributing factors why the company continues to growing and enhance in the period of time. Also, it should be formed as the company will let you have a clear navigation from the company searching for into the employee's house. Take a look in this strategic process by Mike Scarwash which is called the Strategy Driving Selection. This company gave importance to the employees whose the position was in the entry-level jobs. They are very meticulous in recruiting and placing jobs in entry-level. Why? Because they are the one who have a direct contact into the customer. The company noticed that social and reasoning skill makes the customer satisfied in their service and keep them going. That is why the company created a test whereas the social and mission skill for the candidates of entry level will apparently appear and evaluate based on their standard. The fun atmosphere provided by the entry level employee keep the drivers going back repeatedly. To conclude this, it is not always about the internal function of the company or who has the systematic work in the company. It's sometimes the smallest part of it or the person who playing the lowest role in the organization had the biggest deck that is essential for the company's development. So after we learn the purpose and the process of selecting and eliminating the job applicants, we're now going to the principle 
used in the selection method just to ensure that the test measurement will lead the employers to the best candidates. Defining ways to measure the success of a selection method. To ensure the test is in a good fit and still allow us to have a clear feature of the candidates, there are the things we must consider. The first one is the reliability of test measurement. The extent to which a measurement is free from random error. Random errors ito yung mga inconsistent errors natin sa test measurement. For you to have a clear figure of this sa isang test measurement or any kind of measurement. If the person take the test and lead to have a numerous errors randomly in any part of the test, and after a few days nag-take ulit siya and it decreases, and the part you have an error wasn't at the same area of the test prior to your first attempt, as long as the random error decreases, it potentiates the reliability of the test. Also, we could be considered consistent result of the respondent as reliability of the test. Lagi natin tatandaan na there's a factor why the result is spontaneously changes such as the mood of respondent. So, it can modify the result. Additional information, organization must provide information about the reliability of the test. So, it's a principle that they must follow. The reliability of a type the reliability of a type of measurement indicates how free the measurement is from random error. Sometimes it was based on the type of test where asked whether the test prompted the candidates to have an error in the particular area of the test or any part of it. The point whatever it was, if the test allows the personnel or decision makers to see the candidate's ability based on kung ano kinakailangan ng company, it will be fine as reliable test. Usually, this information involves statistics such as correlation coefficient. Correlation coefficient could be either perfect positive relationship which is scores greater than 1.0 while if the scores is lower than 1.0 meaning there is no negative relationship or no correlation at all. For instance, if the person take a two set of tests three days in a row and he get a high scores in all of them meaning the test he taken was strong relationship. But if the person scores high in the first day and third day and scores lower in the second day, meaning that test has no correlation or relationship that connects them. That's how to measure the reliability of the test. Validity, the extent to which performance on a measure, such as a test score, is related to what measure is designed to assess, such as job performance. It simply measures the effectiveness of the test measurement that leads the personnel to have free judgment on the candidates. Also, it measures how good test measurement in leading the personnel to evaluate candidates based on the designated job. Though this validity test will not provide how well the candidates can do most kind of job. For instance, this measurement doesn't measure height and weight as not related in validity measure. As with reliability, Information about the validity of selection methods often uses correlation coefficient. Same with reliability, correlation coefficient is the personal basis in allowing candidates to continue or rejecting them. This is not to show that test is valid in reality, but also signifies fair evaluation despite of your status. The federal government's uniform guidelines on employee selection procedure accept three ways of measuring validity. Criterion related content and construct validity. Criterion related validity, a measure of validity based on showing a substantial correlation between test scores and job performance scores. Meaning substantial considerable relationship between test scores and job performance. Even yung smallest and insignificant things na pwedeng consider as proof. Criterion related measurements of a student aptitude. The graph show the intelligence score in the correlation on job performance of candidates in the left side and the right side their college GPA or grade point average ng college pa sila. We will see in the right side that the points for the 20 cells reads fall near the 45 degree line. The correlation coefficient is near 0.90. For a perfect 1.0, all the points will be on the 45 degree line. While on the right side, the points are scattered more widely. The correlation between college GPA and sales rep performance is much lower. It does mean, based on the graph given, intelligence test correlation with performance rating is more valid than the GPA of the candidates when they are college students. 
there are two kinds of research that are possible for arriving at criterion related validity. The first one is predictive validation. Research that uses the test scores of all applicants and looks for a relationship between the scores and future performance of the applicants who were hired. For instance, the initial performance rating of the candidate will go into analyzing the performance rating of their supervisor to foresee how far the selected candidates can perform well and describe how strong relationship they have. Concurrent validation, research that consists of administering a test to people who currently hold a job and comparing their scores to existing measure of job performance. Personnel are going to foresee the future performance of the candidates using the comparing job performance of the person who was hired with the same position. For instance, the candidate is placing in the measure assistant, but before of that, candidate's performance rating will compare into HR assistant's performance rating kung currently holding the job. Predictive validation prepares more by the organization since all applicants were included even those who had a fully performance will be necessary to include in order to generalize the result. Content and construct validity. Content validity. Consistency between the test items or problems and the kinds of situation or problems that occur on the job. They are more give importance in the content of the test if the content were of a situational factors that is related in potential problem might occur in the job. Personnel will definitely know if the candidates either can do well and manage the problem or easily stress and break down. It is containing a tendencies which commonly happen in the job. Construct validity. Consistency between a high score on a test and a high level of uh, construct such as intelligence or leadership ability as well as between mastery of this construct and successful performance of the job. Candidates who had a high score in any kind of construct test will guaranteed receive a job offer. These people were the special one because they could go do mental aspect and logical mindset that suitable for the job. These tests are valid in the image of challenging and abstract concept. Ability to generalize. Generalize the Valid in other contexts beyond the context in which the selection method was developed. This one of the main factors that must assess in the test. The test should be valid not only in the particular context but in the general context. The selection method will avoid candidates with bias judgment. If the test has this ability to generalize, we will measure selected candidates multiple skill in one job performance. Also, it remarks as fair treatment in every job applicants. Practical value. Utility, the extent to which something provides economic value greater than its cost. So, the value of selection method is based on the organization can offer. If the job related in a million dollar deal, organization can deal a high value of selection method. Why? It's simply because the person will place in job will expose the dealing of high value of money. In other circumstances, if the organization had lower networks such as restaurant, they wouldn't expend a lot of money just to hire a person with in job that has economic salary. Methods that provide economic value greater than the cost of using them are said to have utility. Also, value of selection method is sometimes based in the position of the job in organization. Legal Standards for Selection The Civil Rights Act of 1991 and the Age Discrimination in Employment Act of 1967 The Civil Rights Act of 1991 was enacted to amend parts of the Civil Rights of Act 1964 and to restore and strengthen civil rights laws that bans discrimination in employment and for other purposes. It amends a number of sections in Title No. 7 of the 1964 Civil Rights Act and applies changes that allow certain actions such as trial by jury as well as provides for damages in cases where there is intentional employment discrimination. Although many other federal laws applied to employers with 15 or more employees, the Civil Rights Act of 1991 made no such distinctions and applied to all employers. On the other hand, the Age Discrimination in Employment Act of 1967, or also known as the ADEA, 
protect certain applicants and employees 40 years of age and older from discrimination on the basis of age in hiring, promotion, discharge, compensation, terms and conditions, or privileges among employment. The ADEA is enforced by the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission. The Civil Rights Act of 1991 also prohibits preferential treatment in favor of minority groups. Equal Employment Opportunity Laws It affects the kind of information an organization may gather on application forms and in interviews. Equal Employment Opportunity is a government policy that requires that employers do not discriminate against employees and job applicants based upon certain characteristics such as age, race, color, creed, sex, religion, and disability. The Americans with Disabilities Act of 1991 The ADA is a civil rights law that prohibits discrimination against individuals with disabilities in all areas of public life including jobs, school, transportation, and all public and private places that are open to the general public. The purpose of the law is to make sure that people with disabilities have the same rights and opportunities as everyone else. The American with Disabilities Act of 1991 gives civil rights protection to individuals with disabilities similar to those provided to individuals on the basis of race, color, sex, national origin, age, and religion. It guarantees equal opportunity for individuals with disabilities in public accommodations, employment, transportation, state and local government services, and also in the telecommunications. Table 1.1 showing permissible and impermissible questions for applications and interviews. So as you can see on the left side, we can notice the permissible questions and on the right side, uh, the impermissible questions. Examples of permissible questions are what is your full name or have you ever worked under a different name? Uh, it is much acceptable to us into our future job applicants those kinds of questions rather than asking them what is what was your maiden name or what was the nationality of your name? Another example of permissible question is that if you are hired can you show a proof of age rather than asking directly how old are you or how would you feel about working for someone younger than you? The Immigration Reform and Control Act of 1986 or also known as the Simpson-Mazzoli Act. It was passed by the 99th United States Congress and signed into law by U.S. President Ronald Reagan on November 6, 1986. The Immigration Reform and Control Act altered U.S. immigration law by making it illegal to hire illegal immigrants knowingly and establishing financial and other penalties for companies that employed illegal immigrants. The Act also legalized most undocumented immigrants who had arrived in the country prior to January 1 of 19. Good day everyone! I am Christine May Sibautista and I am here to discuss about comparing the common methods used for selecting human resources. Job Applications and Resumes When you are applying for a job, resume is what you need to submit first to give your background information to the company that you wanted to be part of. Employers needed background information of the applicants to start the selection process. Application Forms Application Forms is provided by the employers. The applicants need to fill out these forms because this will serve as the basic databases of the employers and also the contact and mailing address of the applicants. Areas for applicants to provide several types of information. Contact Information The applicant's name, 
address, phone number, and email address. Work experience. Companies that the applicants work for, job titles, and dates of employment. Educational background. High school, college, and universities attended, and degrees awarded. Applicant signature. Signature following a statement that the applicant has provided true and complete information. Resume is what you needed to submit first when you're applying for a job to introduce yourself for your potential employers. References When you're applying for a job, a common request among employers is for you to provide a list of professional references. After your interview, your references could be a key component of whether you receive a job offer from a company. For each new job opportunity, you should make sure your list of references is the right fit. Think about your relationship with each person. How closely did you work with them? How recently did you work together? How will they explain your qualities to the hiring manager? All these details play a role in who goes on your list. You need to select people who will emphasize your strengths to potential employers. Background Checks Employers do background checks to learn more about a candidate's background. They want to confirm the information provided on the application or resume and in interviews and uncover any potential issues. The goal is to make the best hiring decisions possible. The organization has already identified candidates whose applications or resumes indicate they meet basic requirements. The organization continues the selection process with this narrower pool of candidates. Often, the next step is to gather objective data through one or more employment tests. This test falls into two broad categories which are aptitude tests and achievement tests. What is an aptitude test? It is an assessment used to determine a candidate's cognitive ability or personality. They are extremely common in job assessments as they can be used to predict the likelihood of a candidate's success in a job role whilst eliminating any bias through its standardized administration. You are likely to encounter them in selection for all job sectors. However, they will be specialized to cater for the specific job requirements of the role. While on the other hand, the achievement test is a test of a developed skills or knowledge. The most common type of achievement test is a standardized test. It is developed to measure skills and knowledge learned in a given grade level, usually through planned instructions such as training or classroom instruction. The physical ability test. It typically asks individuals to perform job-related tasks requiring manual labor or physical skills. These tasks measure physical abilities such as strength, muscular flexibility, and stamina. Examples of physical ability tests include muscular tension test, muscular power test, muscular endurance test, cardiovascular endurance test, flexibility test, and balance test. Cognitive ability test. This test assesses abilities involved in thinking, example of that is reasoning, perception, memory, verbal and mathematical ability, and problem solving. Such tests pose questions designed to estimate applicants' potential to use mental processes to solve work-related problems or to acquire new job knowledge. Performance Examination or Test is designed to measure a candidate's ability to perform tasks essential to the major functions of the job. It usually involves four to six exercises or stations and each one testing a different skill. It is usually following a written exam or as part of the hiring interview process. The Assessment Center. It is a process where candidates are examined to determine their suitability for specific types of employment, 
especially management or military command. The candidate's personality and aptitudes are determined by techniques including interviews, group exercises, presentations, examinations, and psychometric testing. Personality Inventory It is a self-assessment tool that career counselors and other career development professionals use to help people learn about their personality types. It reveals information about individuals' social traits, motivations, strengths and weaknesses, and attitudes. Experts believe these factors play an important role in job and career success and satisfaction. The Big Five Traits Extroversion, Adjustment, Agreeableness, Consensuousness, and Inquisitiveness At the left side of this slide shows a picture of people who participate in Google's annual Code Jam, a global programming competition which is typically exhibit one of the Big Five personality traits. And on the right side, Table 1.2 showing five major personality dimensions measured by personality inventories. Number one, extroversion, which means sociable, gregarious, assertive, talkative, or expressive. And number two, adjustment, uh, it typically defines as emotional stable, non-depressed, secure, or content. Number three, agreeableness, which means courteous, trusting, good-natured, tolerant, cooperative, or forgiving. On the number four, conscientiousness, usually defines as dependable, organized, persevering, thorough, achievement-oriented. And lastly, inquisitiveness, that means curious, imaginative, artistically sensitive, broad-minded, or playful. Honesty or integrity test. An honesty test is a specific type of personality test designed to assess an applicant's tendency to be honest, trustworthy, and dependable. A lack of integrity is associated with such counterproductive behaviors such as theft, violence, sabotage, disciplinary problems, and absenteeism. Integrity tests have been found to measure some of the same factors as standard personality tests particularly conscientiousness and perhaps some aspects of emotional stability and agreeableness. Company and employers need to consider things in the use of drug testing and should ensure that their drug testing programs conform to some general rules. Number one, it should administer the test systematically to all applicants for the same job. Number two, it should use drug testing for jobs that involve safety hazard. 3. It should have a report of the results sent to the applicant along with information about how to appeal the result and be retested if appropriate. And lastly, it should respect applicants' privacy by conducting tests in an environment that is not intrusive and keeping results confidential. Medical Examinations Especially for physically demanding jobs, organizations may wish to conduct medical examinations to see that the applicants can meet the job's requirements. In a physical examination, medical examination, or clinical examination, a medical practitioner examines a patient for any possible medical signs or symptoms of a serious medical condition. job interview is consisting of a conversation between a job applicant and a representative of an employer which is conducted to assess whether the applicant should be hired. Interviews are one of the most popularly used devices for employee selection. Interviewing techniques What is a non-directive interview? It is an interview in which questions are not pre-arranged. Unstructured or non-directive interviews generally have no set or format. The lack of structures allow the interviewer to ask questions 
which comes to their mind next as a follow-up and interrogate points of interest as they go on further. While on the other hand, a structured interview is a type of interview in which the interviewer asks a particular set of predetermined questions to the applicants. In structured interviews, questions are planned and created in advance, which means that all candidates are asked the same questions in the same order. Situational Interview In situational interviewing, Job seekers are asked to respond to a specific situation they may face on the job or workplace. These types of questions are designed to draw out more of your analytical and problem-solving skills as well as how you handle problems with short notice and minimal preparation. Behavior Description Interviewing is based on the premise that past behavior is the best predictor of future behavior. This technique is used to find out what the applicant actually did in the past similar situations. Panel Interview It refers to a type of interview which includes one applicant and several interviewers, often representatives of different departments within a company like the hiring manager and a member of the human resource recruitment team. Fun fact. Did you know what turns off an interviewer? Interviewers gather information from what job applicants tell them and also from how they behave during their interview or application process. Frankly, some behaviors are a turn off for them. In a recent sur survey, HR professionals identified ways that job applicants can kill their prospects in becoming accepted in the work environment or company. On the graph below, dressing provocatively is the number one factor that can turn off the interviewer in the selection process. Next is preparing an application or a resume with typographical errors. Also, bringing up salary first in the conversation is a turn off for the employers, especially to the HR interviewer. And lastly, Speaking too famili familiarly within the job or within the workplace or within the person you are talking with is also a major turn off for some interviewer. How to conduct interviewing effectively and efficiently? Interviewing is one of the HR major function and almost all of the managers are involved with at some point. Here below are some tips for conducting interviews that identify the best for candidates and applicants. Number one, the manager should be prepared before the interview. Two, the manager should put the applicant at ease while on the interview process so that the applicant or the candidate should be comfortable while on the interview proper. Three, ask about past behaviors of the applicant. Four, listen to Ruli. Five, take notes on what the applicant are saying. And lastly, let the applicant know what to expect after the interview process. Preparing to interview. In order to have a positive outcome and to consider the interview process as a successful one, the HR department and the employers should prepare it carefully. A well-planned Interview should be standardized, comfortable for the participants, and focus on the job and the organization. If this achieved, company will surely benefit and also the employees. We are now in the very last part of this topic, whereas the decision makers will going to communicate and have agreement with the qualified candidate. Explaining how employers carry out the process of making a selection decision. Selection decision. After reviewing application, scoring tests, conducting interviews, and checking references, the organization needs to make decision about which candidates to place in which jobs. In practice, most organizations find more than one qualified candidate to fill an open position. The selection decision typically combines 
ranking based on objective criteria along with subjective judgment about which candidate will make the greatest contribution. How organizations select employees. In selecting employees among the candidates selected, it wasn't about who is the supervisor like the most and HR personnel most prefer among them. It's always be an objective type. Their performance must from ability and motivation at the same time. The decision makers will assess who among them can barely handle both ability and motivation or who is among had the highest score and both ability and motivation. Take note this word because deflating the role in placing the person in the job. Uh, there is two phrases in selecting decision. The first one is multiple hurdle model. Process of arriving at the selection decision by eliminating some candidates at each stage of the selection process. It's simple as that. So from reviewing resume and then testing and interviews after then follow up interviews for checking references and backgrounds and then interviews again and again until they found the best one. The needed one who has a great performance rating that fits in the job and can handle both his ability and motivation. The second one is compensatory model. It is shorten the number of candidates and make the process faster when there's a few number of candidates left. Communicating the decision. It is the final stage for the qualified candidates. They will now negotiating with the leaders and highest position. Everything about the jobs including faith, benefits, and contingency will be discussed by the representative. They will assure that every detail has been discussed completely as the right of the qualified candidates before they undergo the arrival in hiring employee.